all right so here is my visual studio and here i'm going to show you some of the basic c sharp 3.0 stuff uh, which will give us some idea about how we are working with link and what helps us uh, execute link um, in in a, in a sense so let me create a sample application so a new project and i'm using visual studio 2010 the demo i am showing can also be written using visual studio 2008 right so I will choose console application and then say OK. Yes. And here I'll write some code. So let's suppose that you have got a class called customer. So how you define a class today, something looks similar to this. So you have got a class customer and then two public properties, customer ID and customer name. And to be able to define the public property, you need a private variable, customer ID. And then within that, you say get and set. And uh, for the customer name, also you have private variable, and then do get and set and use the customer name within the get and set. And uh, when you want to really use this uh, class and initialize as an object, how you define, you say customer obj equals to new customer, and you say obj dot customer ID you pass on some customer ID that's what you do today all of us we have been doing it for some time right so we say this and then we finish it up we just print that out in the console saying that this is my ID and after ID here the customer name comes so I say obj dot customer id and then obj dot customer name that's it i execute this it will show up in the console so that's fine that's the way we we do it now assume that you need to actually uh, you want to reduce the number of lines by removing this uh, property initialization and you want to do it in the constructor so what you need now since they are public property, you need to have a parameterized constructor, something similar to this, to be able to initialize their values. And based on the value you're passing, uh, it will initialize the private variable and they, they will internally initialize the public properties. So that's what we have been doing for some time. What happens, you have number of such public properties and you are not initializing all of them every time. So you have to keep on changing those parameterized constructor, create multiple overloads, which will enable you to choose what you want. In c 3.0, what we have enabled is that the way to define or declare a constructor along with public property initialization. So how, how it does, happens. So you have got constructor and then say customer ID. You choose the number, let's say 12, and then customer name, let's say this time this. So that's how you initialize the constructor and public property and you do the run you get the new output right so this is just giving you some sort of similar output but you have reduced the number of lines so you can actually choose to have uh, only customer id not the name so it's not always mandatory to have all the values uh, assigned so you can assign the public property based on your requirement you don't don't need a constructor and uh, this is uh, in c sharp we call as uh, object initializer now in customer if i go ahead and say that i'm not doing anything great within getter and setter so if i go ahead and remove this getter and setter and do something similar to my interface so when you define interface properties, so it looks like that. Okay? I don't need this uh, private variable. So this looks like an interface kind of thing, but it's not. So it actually reduces or the way you uh, make things simple in terms of defining property. So when you are not doing anything great within getter and setter, you can actually get rid of those multiple line declaration and make things simple just like in one single line similar to that and this will give you the same output
same output based on what you have passed. No error. Okay, so I'll just say customer name. Let's say well. Okay. Now you can actually do it for the second one also. So you say prop string. Oh, once you do that, you execute. You will get the same output. Now this is what we call as automatic property. Okay. Now things comes into the picture. You since you are already using C sharp 2.0, you might have used generic type of collection, right? So if, if I just go ahead and say hide this piece of code and say that hey, I want to create a list of customer object which will hold all the customers like a collection so I'd say new list of customer and if I have to create individual entries what I have to do I have to say that list dot add and then use the object initializer feature to initialize an object otherwise I have to use many more multiple lines so let's just put that thing within and define it similarly I can go ahead and define few more customers so I say 10 I say 100 let's leave it like that now if I want to show you the output so let's just run some iteration and then show you the output so I say for each for k in list and then say this uh, instead of k let's use obj and then execute it now this will all show you all the elements and this is not new I mean like the way you are designing what are the elements will be staying within the list is not new what is this new is in v c sharp is that it allows you to do things in one single line so all this add method you have added you can actually get rid of that and go ahead and choose to have this Now, if you just execute this piece of code, this will also give you the same output. So what is happening at the background is that it is allowing you to uh, go through the individual elements you are passing just like an array. And it is creating dot add method for you for each of the individual things. So it's a compiler headache for you to create all the individual add method. but being an implementer you will be writing it in one single line i've just broken it into multiple lines for the better clarity but it's actually one single line one single statement having only one semicolon right so this is the conciseness of c sharp 3.0 and th these things gives us a lot of uh, opportunity so let's just um, hide this piece of code okay and enable this one now when I have simple class which does not really carry any um, method within it that means it is just to project the output so if I go ahead delete it and I will start getting an error like here here so let's just keep on removing things if I remove this this still shows an error I will replace this customer object with something similar to var. So if you have used JavaScript, you might have used this kind of thing and then I will start executing this code. And this gives you the output like this. So what is happening in the background? By this piece of code, it is creating a class 
in my compiled code the moment i compile it the msil gets generated right the the machine uh, lang the code the native code for dotnet so the native code for dotnet creates a class with a random name having two property customer id and customer name and the type of the property is being decided by the value i am passing at the right hand side for the each of the property so since 12 is an integer so customer id will become integer and similarly customer name so if i if i now say cust n now my next line will start throwing me an error see notice here this is the design time capability the class will only be generated the moment i compile the code i can keep on changing and design time and this will start analyzing wherever i have used this obj did i use this cust na so this a uh, de just design time compiler right now i have to i if i put dot i will get the intelligent support for cust and na so and it is also saying that it's subtype string right now if i execute this this will give you the same output because the values are same but the 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 thing which i'm trying to say is that this is very important in link when you try to project your custom output you always need to project it is in in form of collection collection of a class so let's say you you have a class holding five properties but your actual output requires only two of them so what you need to do you need to get a collection for those two of the properties so you need to create another class which will hold those two property types and then you project an output as a collection so when i'll be showing writing the la language in a query that will make more sense but this is something which we'll be using very frequently in link okay and this what is this var keyword this var keyword is new in c sharp 3.0 which allows us to define local variable without defining its type or explicitly mentioning its type that means if i say var i equals to 9 that means it's going to declare a variable of type integer with a value 9 so var has got some rules and regulations first it is it has to be defined with the initializer so that means you need to have a equal sign with a value based on the value the type will be decided you cannot define a value after you de declare the var key so this var can only be used locally that means you cannot use it for return type you cannot use it as parameter type you cannot use it as public property you cannot use it as public variable it's only for the local scope so but does it really satisfy the var is it something like javascript can we pass anything and everything no you cannot pass so if i pass hello here this var this var keyword will start throwing me an error so if i compile this code it says that cannot implicitly convert type string to an integer just like any other integer value you define today but you are not saying integer because you are passing this now if i put 9.0 this i becomes double if you hover over this it says double now the the error also got changed to cannot convert type string to double like that so if you say date time dot today it will become date time now this error also gets changed to system dot date time and then this change to this so you get different types of error based on the type of value but it's just like any other dot net type but you are not explicitly mentioning the type you are saying it's var just like if you think about db today it's dim right dim variable name that's it you pass the value right hand side but the difference is that dim allows you to assign the value much much later than when you have declared but here you have to do it in the same line and the same place wherever you are defining the variable you cannot do it later on all right so we will move to the next phase where we will set the stage for how link um, started evolving from what is the concept behind it so let's just clean some of my code and then hide this error page okay and then come back now let's say you have got a list generic list of type integers holding values from 1 to 10 okay fairly simple now someone asks me to create the list um holding only the even numbers so i'll say 
list integer even one and I will I can actually do a for each loop and then find whether it's divisible by two or not if it is yes then keep on adding that to a list if I am little advanced kind of developer I will start using uh, the concept of delegate which is more efficient way of doing it so I'll say array list array int okay dot find all so if I say find all and then this allows me to pass some um, method name so this method has to be defined so I can go ahead and define this method so I'll say static and then say int i2 and it has to return true or false so bool okay I'll say return i2 mod 2 equals equals 0 now if it is 0 then it will return true and if it is false it will return it will do nothing so let's just run a for each loop so i'll say var k in even even one and then say console it k dot um nothing i'll just say print so i will get both two four six eight and ten so all of them right you can see that two four six eight ten are coming up over here right all of them are even numbers so I'm getting them over here now from C sharp 2.0 onwards we have introduced a concept called uh, anonymous method which allows us to define a method without having actual method body or method declaration so you can use that so you can use delegate that's from C sharp and I2 int I2 and I say that return I2 merge 2 equals equals 0 and then finish up. Now I don't need this additional method so I can get rid of that. Now this will also give me the same output. If I go ahead and change the condition to something let's say greater than 5, now this will show me 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Only those numbers which are greater than 5. Right, so based based on the chain condition you are passing, true or false. Now what I, I can do in C sharp 3.0, wherever I, the places where I can implement anonymous method, I can write something like this. Now if I execute this, this will give you the even numbers. Now this is what in C sharp 3.0 we call as a lambda expression. So lambda expression is the concept taken from the functional programming world which allows us to uh, uh, define function uh, inline function uh, just like as if you are defining a variable or something like an expression so it, it this sign identifies the differentiator or it, it stands as differentiator between the parameter and the actual body so right hand side is the body and left hand side is the parameter so if you hover over this x it says int x so this is parameter so this parameter uh, thing comes before this int x and this is the the body of it so this x the calculation you want to do is this uh, left right hand side and this is the parameter you can explicitly say that int x like that and then things will become quite obvious since I'm using list of integer that can only hold integer value so the values will come be coming from will only be having integer so that's why it is quite obvious or I don't have to mention it but I can always go ahead and mention that if you need additional parameter you can go ahead and say int y like that so you can pass on int y in in j uh, string k blah blah stuff so one after another so whatever type so it's just like any other method but the way you define is just in, in a single line so now things might might come into a picture saying that hey uh, do I really need to learn this stuff so what we have done we have made things little simple 
So we said that hey, we will give you an interface called iEnumerable of the type you want to get, and then we will allow you to write query like syntax, which will say that from i in array int uh, where i mod 2 equals equals 0 select i. So this will give you all the even numbers. Not only this, you can actually go ahead and sort it out. So you can say order by i descending. Now if I execute this code, what happens? It starts from 10, 6, 8, uh, 4, 2. So all the even numbers, but starting from 10. Now, few questions might come into your mind that, hey, what is from, where, order by, all this stuff coming in. Are they really a keyword in C Sharp 3? We, as a Microsoft, claim that mm, anything and everything you have written in previous version of C Sharp 2 should actually run without you changing anything. So that means if we have added new keywords which were not there in the previous version of C Sharp, uh, could throw you an error, right? Could throw you an error because you cannot use a keyword to define a variable. So if you have defined a variable, let's say, with a name from, uh, let's suppose it says string from equals to from, and you might have an had another value variable called where equals to where, then ideally they both of them should throw you an error. But let's see if I compile this code. What happens? Both of them stands as a separate keyword and then can show you. So these are basically an illusion. Though you see blue colors, but they actually are not true keywords. Right? So what happens here, it changes to lambda expression call. So now if I write this language in a query in a lambda expression fashion, so if I say if when one equals to array int dot where i as in i mod two equals equals zero dot dot select i as in i let's suppose this now if I just execute this it will give you the same output 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 same thing so finally when you compile this code this piece of code never goes as it is it gets changed into a lambda expression method called like dot where dot select dot or by blah 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 stuff so nowhere in your actual compiled code all this from where select stays as keyword and this is just the compiler to find out the sequence of it and then making changes so i might have another question that why it starts from from where it's not from select reason behind this is a programming language and you notice here this is not within double code so we do actually compile the whole piece of code so the first line identifies that you are defining the variable. So i is of type array int. So i is basically a collection that's a range of variable which holds integer. So, and this where condition actually filters those values out and creates a separate collection in the memory which holds only this condition values. And then you do the filtering and then you finally select it and it gives you another collection. So no matter whether you are getting one piece or multiple pieces, uh, link output is always a collection, collection of some type. So here I'm working with integer, so it's a collection of integer. So we'll get all the integers coming up over here, making sense. And then yeah. I I go ahead and remove it as part. 